in the last two years or so, we've actually had a shift in our strategy for Facebook. It's really, you know, let's go where the people are. We had before then, a couple years ago, really tried to bring people into certain different platforms or different sites. Let's build this custom. Let's do this tailored. When really we were seeing a couple years ago that a lot of our community was on Facebook. So why not go there to better engage them um, where they are? So that was sort of the tip of the iceberg. And then we tried to drill down. And I appreciate you saying that you think we have a good, solid plan in place. I think that has been helpful to a certain extent. Um, but we try to work more so as a framework. So where are our sort of tent poles? And let's just build off of that. Because we try to be uh, responsive. We try to be current. Um, we try to curate external things that we're seeing so it's not just about us because we think people like to come to our site and engage with us because we're pulling in fun things, interesting things, and making philanthropy and giving and the social sector accessible on a platform like Facebook. So we try to do things like the image macros with a fun quote and maybe about be fearless one day or we do a survey another day. Um, pull in you know, maybe one of your articles another day. So we try to do the mix and try to be responsive. We, we every uh, week and every month, try to track what are the most popular posts, what's getting the most shares, um, what is getting the most PTAT on Facebook. And we try to recreate or you know, try to build off of that in order to better serve the folks that we're reaching. Good. So I have a question. You're using Facebook Insights probably, right? And it sounds right. like on a weekly basis to drill down into the posts mm -hmm. and see which ones are the most engaging, right? Which, which mm -hmm. What's really the best content is what you're trying to find, right? And mm -hmm. Facebook recently changed from the virality, which mm -hmm. was like that magic number that would show you what your best stuff was. Mm -hmm. Now it's looking at engagement rate, which includes post clicks. So I'm just curious, are you filtering out the post click part or are you looking at just likes, comments, and shares? I know that as a team, and especially with her sort of guidance on this, shares are really sort of our sort of uh, golden, you mm -hmm. know, uh, $64,000 question, if you will. How do we do on shares? Um, so that's one of our main focuses right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a share is very different from a comment, mm -hmm. which is very different right. from a like. So a like, right. as you know, it's like a throwaway. Oh, I like that. I like that. And it's just a very, it's almost the laziest gesture anyone could possibly <laughs> do on the internet. But a comment is more kind of ego driven, like this is what I think. The share is saying all my friends have to see this, which is huge. Exactly. I mean, that is. I believe in this. Right. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, that's word of mouth marketing at the, at, the, okay. at, the, at the core. What type of thought process do you guys go through in terms of like determining what characteristics to pull from that information? Do you say, oh, this is photos, photos of people? How, how are you putting on a Sherlock Holmes hat with right. the data? So for right now, because we will, on a weekly basis, we just don't have you know, as much time as we would like to have to drill down as deep as what you're suggesting. So that happens more on a quarterly basis for mm -hmm. us, and then uh, mid-year, and then annual. Um, so we try to get some learnings from that in a bigger sense, so it's mm -hmm. not just week by week. Because sometimes we have the random post that goes crazy, or the random post that doesn't yeah. do well at all. We all thought it would, and, and so we have to wait a little while to see why that was. Um, but for us, on a weekly basis, we usually just pull the top fives. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, out of this week, what were the top fives in terms of shares? What were the top fives in, in terms of, you know, PTHT? Mm -hmm. um, and then try to try to glean some some top line learnings from that. But we try not to put too much stock into just the weekly. We try to the then weekly, yeah. sort of aggregate it because. Again, we've been, you know, we don't want to get thrown off by a red herring mm. um, and then repeat that, but then realize, oops, that was just a fluke. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when you think about a community, right, what their wants are, their desires and their needs and their personalities, you know, that really doesn't change over a week period. It may, right. not, it may not even change over three months. It may change over six months. So I think it's smart to look at that type of data or look for that, those type mm -hmm. of patterns and what topics and what type of content and how it's presented and, you know, mm -hmm. different characteristics on a much broader timeline. I think that's really smart. So just a follow-up question to take it in a slightly different direction. Um, so when you look at recent posts, though, even on a weekly basis, are you sniffing out opportunities? You know, whoa, this post is performing really well. Mm -hmm. Let's repost this image on Pinterest, you know, mm -hmm. because this is proven to be good content on Facebook now. 
let's put it on Pinterest or let's promote that post, something like that. So we try to do that. We try to cross post when appropriate. So to your point, mm -hmm. spot on. If it's an image, then we try it on Instagram or on Pinterest. One of the really uh, cool things that we've been using lately, for us at least, has been promoted posts. If a post is starting to trend a little bit higher or starting to gain some traction, if we put just a little bit, maybe it's $50, maybe it's 100 mm. uh, behind it to do promoted posts, we're noticing that we're getting some good engagement that helps tee up our feed higher up or more regularly because mm. they've been engaged yeah. with that post. So that's been helpful um, and, and really interesting. We've doing, been doing some testing too. Uh, for our purposes, just in the last handful, so it's not um, over a long period of time, but just the last handful, mm -hmm. we're noticing that doing promoted posts with our community, so not people that you know are outside, but rather people who have liked our page, mm -hmm. has really been helping with engagement, with shares, with likes. Um, so it's been really helping. So you're actually doing a promoted post, but you're focusing it mainly on fans, right? Correct, and, okay. and it's just been a handful in the last month or so because we did a back to school campaign. Mm -hmm. um, we recently did a survey to some members, so it's you know something that we've been playing with and just experimenting with on a very small level. Again, fifty dollars yeah. here and there, just to to see what will happen. Um, mm -hmm. And we're trying to collect all that information then to share with this mm -hmm. sector. That's great. I mean, because someone has already liked your page, right? And that mm -hmm. is you know they're kind of past at least the first date. They, they would be more likely than the non-fan to be interested in what you're, what you're posting. What would you say to an organization who is looking to go um, from flying by the seat of their pants, not really using social media correctly, or, or feeling like they could get more, to mm -hmm. going to where you guys are at, where you have somewhat of a, a plan? So our, our mantra, you know, is be fearless in, in the sense that not be reckless and go out and just go crazy on social media. But... Dip your toe in the water, experiment, and just try things. I think the beauty of social media, um, and, and you've often preached this, John, you know, try it, right? I mean, it's like, try these X, Y, and Z things. If you see something happening or you see a platform that you think might work, give it a shot if it's no cost especially, right? Um, yeah. Give it a shot. See if it resonates. Sometimes these things take time. So I don't want people to get discouraged or think, you know, oh, nobody liked my post or nobody shared it, therefore it failed. Um, I think it's an iterative process and, and one that builds on itself. Um, so I think finding the right tools, you know, we try to, even as a team of three on our, um, you know, as far as people that are hands-on with our social media here, um, we are, I think that's fortunate, right? I think we've got more uh, assets and resources than other nonprofits. But that being said, we feel the burden, we feel the strain, so we try to find the right tools to help us streamline our work, whether it's a free tool or a low-cost tool like Hootsuite, or you know something else that helps streamline and, and schedule and, and help you maximize your time. Um, you have some great tips, as does Beth and some other folks, about time management. So I would say that's probably the number one thing that I would say is, is if you are feeling daunted or overwhelmed, um, try to tackle the time management angle and, and experiment. Guy Kawasaki has this great um, tip about, you know, on Twitter, for example, um, something like 90 or 95 percent of your content should be about other people because really if you're just talking about yourself all the time people will get disinterested and, and not be as engaged and so I think to your point um, the whole process about being creative about curating it's also just helpful I mean if you think about it on a daily basis we're all trying to keep up with just the general news in our sector or field if you see an article that catches your eye that's perfect fodder because if it caught your eye it's probably going to catch somebody else's eye um, and you may be helping them out by flagging it, but at the same time, killing two birds with one stone and producing more content. 